Hello, how you doing? My name is Jerry Villa. We're here at Showtime Audio in Chicago, Illinois, doing a remote wireless lighting system for four-wheeler magazines, uh, H3 project. Hey, these are the parts that are from Directed Electronics that are going to allow us to, to set up a wi the wireless lighting system. Number one part is going to be the relay. We're probably going to do a relay, a rebate per pair of lights. This is what actually allows the lights to t themselves to turn on. This is the control module, which controls um, wirelessly allows us to turn on and off the sections of the lights at a time. This right here is going to be a fuse block that we're going to use because we're going to uh, fuse all the lights individually. And then this is a main breaker which is going to allow us to disconnect the system all at once or turn it on all at once. This way if we ever have a fault or any kind of problem we can just push the button and it kills the, uh, kills the power to the whole unit. These relays are meant to slip together so you can make them much neater. And we also just wrote all the, on the relay what, which, which lights they're going to be controlling. How are you doing? Now, now we're, I just made a board, a quarter inch masonite, to mount all the equipment to. Alright, now we're just going to spray through. We uh, drilled all the holes, drilled all our mounting holes. So now all we're going to do is carpet it so it doesn't look bad and you have a piece of wood just sitting on the floor. And that's the finished piece. Now we're just mounting all the components, getting they're ready to go in the car. How you doing? This is the part that takes the most. The setup is always the most involved. After that, it's case. How you doing? Well, this is the finished product. Everything's on a neat little board, as compact as possible. Fuse block, relays, receiver. This is the back, but you won't see. It'll just sit right under the seat. But this way, it's a nice central location for everything. If anything goes wrong, you know where to go and where to go look. We're uh, going to take out the runners and the kick panel so that we can start running some of the wires. Well, we're going to run four gauge. It's a little bit of an overkill, but better too much than not enough. Through the stock grommet, so the grommet will actually seal around the wire and we don't have to make any new holes that will rust in the firewall. Alrighty, well this is the circuit breaker finally done. All the wires are nice and loomed. We got uh, industrial Velcro, so if it ever has to go to service, all you do is unvelcro it, move it aside, take the cover off, service the battery, and then you could just pop it right back in place, turn it on, back in business. Right now I'm just putting in the so-called command center, and I'm fishing all the fishing all the, the four gauge that main power lead that we need, and then running out all the the output wires from the relay pack that's going to trigger that's going to trigger the the light. All right, now we're moving on to actually wiring the lights to the system. We're going to have to take the stock harness and rewire it so that it'll work with our wireless system. Matt Danelli from Attitude Performance, also down here at Showtime Audio today, doing the roof light install. Okay, we used the factory mounting point for the Gobi rack into the roof. Drilled a small hole in the bottom of the P light bracket. Now we can get light right above the door to look out for rocks going trees going down the trail. Getting the light, the light mounted nice and close to the roof like this should cut down on wind noise and give us a nice clean installation. Okay, since Ken forgot to bring the, some of the plugs for the PIA lights, we're going to hardwire them in and if we ever have to service them we can put GM weather pack connectors on them later. Now all we're doing is uh, looming up the wires, just making it look nice so it doesn't uh, uh, stand out too much or, and it also helps to keep it from getting caught on anything. Okay, we're going to make this rack removable for the future in case he ever decides to take it off. So this little seven pin trailer connector will have underneath the vent, we have a little bit of extra room. Pop that off. We've sanded this down and shaped the sides a little bit to make it a little bit thinner profile. And that will get mounted about like that. Alright, well, these are all the wires that we have to uh, that come off the roof rack that we now have to run into our uh, RV hitch plug. Two little cushion clamps will keep this plug in place underneath. We wrapped it with a little bit of Dynamat so it doesn't rattle and doesn't scratch any of the paint. Alright, now I read up this switch just to program it to make my life a little easier. So I'm going to turn on the switch, press and hold the button, wait for the chirp, it confirms, let go, switch off, that confirms that I have the, the button. Now when I press the button, relays click, which turns on the light. 
All right, we're all set. We accomplished everything we set out to do. We got all 10 PL lights mounted. We got our remote control working, and here's how it works. You hit the button, boom, lights come on. The other button, right side comes on, hit it again, right side goes out, hit it again, rear goes out. So everything from a controller, done. Well, as you just heard Jerry V at Showtime Audio say, our wireless remote control system is now up and running for our uh, Project Trail Hugger. We can now activate our PL lights simply by pressing a button on the directed electronics key fob. We're using wide angle 70 degree fog lights on the rear of the vehicle. Same thing on the side. Up front we're using four driving lights which have a 15 degree angle. Inside the vehicle we've taken a fob just like this, velcroed it to the center console. It allows us to just use our fingertips to uh, turn the lights on and off while we're driving.